1984. About a thousand people have gathered downtown behind all the barricades, two blocks uh, around the building having already been barricaded. <coughs> Excuse me. The building will come down by the implosion method, that is, it will collapse in on itself. Twelve separate explosions in six seconds. The 240 pounds of dynamite inside the columns of the Stowers building. Cables will bring the walls in on themselves from those columns. The area is clear and secure now. The dynamite will be electrically detonated from a safe distance away. Here's another siren. You may just barely be able to hear it. We're 15 seconds away. I say it will only take six seconds to bring that building down. It's hard to believe. The rubble will be confined almost to the lot area, but a huge cloud of dust will be created by this implosion, being done by the Wells Wrecking Company from Oklahoma City. second siren. Three short blasts. I'm told now the countdown's underway. The 70-year-old Stowers Furniture Building, nothing more than a cloud of dust and 400 tons of rubble, went off without a hitch. A thousand people or more in downtown San Antonio to watch that on this Sunday morning in 30-degree weather. You can see now the dust spreading for blocks. People actually running away trying to get clear of that cloud of dust. Actually, it won't be more than a few seconds before it's up our way above the uh, city uh, on top of the National Bank of Commerce building. <laughs> the streets are completely uh, engulfed in that cloud of dust now. You can't even see, uh, see the rubble. It's almost an eerie sight and certainly something we don't see every day. The last one having taken place three and a half years ago. The dust cloud reaching the top now of the uh, Frost Tower. An amazing sight. We want to show you uh, in just a minute uh, in slow motion what you just saw live. To give you uh, another look and another perspective at, uh, at that. Okay, we have that tape ready, I'm told. Let's take a look at the demolition once again in slow motion. Do we have that tape ready? Was it live here? Okay, here we go in slow motion now. This was recorded earlier. You'll be seeing it fall here in just a second.
As I said, this, uh, this is in slow motion. We're rolling that tape now. It recorded just a minute ago. Are we having some trouble uh, there with that tape? There it goes, there it goes, in slow motion. Recorded just a couple of minutes ago. We're back live now on top of the National Bank of Commerce. The dust cloud uh, beginning to break up a bit as it floats all around town. The winds are fairly calm, I think just a couple of miles an hour this morning. But as far as we could tell, the demolition came off without a hitch. Something that everyone, uh, especially the wrecking company, is, is pleased with, I'm sure. That building leveled to make way for the uh, new Frost Bank Tower. Let's take a look at that rubble now. It's amazing to think that that was uh, just a few minutes ago, a 10-story building. In about 20 minutes, uh, they'll sound another siren to indicate that the area is clear. And today and for the next few days, workmen will clear away that rubble for construction on the new building to start, that to be completed in 1984. The streets uh, surrounding the area covered with dust, people beginning now to, uh, to head homeward. I'm sure with a lot of memories and uh, I'm sure a lot of good pictures. Well, that's what remains of the Stowers Furniture Building. Demolished this morning one week late, but nonetheless uh, off without a hitch. And uh, that completes our coverage of uh, the demolition of the Stowers Building. I'm Mike Cavender, News Center 4, above the uh, city on the National Bank of Commerce building. Let's now return to our regular programming. This has been a News Center 4 special report, the Stowers Building Falls. We now resume our regular programming in progress. Men of God, I know, he's developed a network that's not illegal. Area residents say it's the worst flood ever to hit the Bandera area. Rivers and streams swelled to more than 100 times their original size. Suddenly, there were impassable rivers blocking all traffic on all highways into Bandera, the town isolated, accessible only by air. Emergency helicopters were called to rescue hundreds of people. The crest of the Medina River came suddenly, and for most, they barely made it out. You feel all right? Yeah, I'm sort of lost. And, and the water came up so fast that it locked my bathroom, shut my bathroom door, and I couldn't open it against the, the water. Just kept praying that God would stop the water and I'll let it get into my lungs. Two persons at the Bandina camp on the river died from the flooding. At 8.30 this morning, these houses were on dry ground. When police came to evacuate them, the residents were skeptical of leaving. I woke up about 5 o'clock and I could hear the river, but I didn't really see anything, so I couldn't get out. So, um, just went back to bed. About 8.30, the phone rang, got up. And at that time, the, um, the river was 
out of its banks, but not close to the house at all, but they told us we had to evacuate, but I wasn't too concerned about it at that time. Within 45 minutes, the house was completely under. And then down the river went refrigerators, telephone poles, and tons of other debris. By early this afternoon, the river crossing Highway 16, just this side of Bandera, went down about 15 feet. And you could see some of the cars, trucks, and treetops that had been underwater for more than six hours. But the town remained inaccessible by road. The water was slowly going down as of late this afternoon. But residents were fearful of rumors of a second crest. As one resident said, if it should come, nothing will be able to survive it. Henry Bonilla, Channel 5 Eyewitness News in Bandera. A civil defense spokesman said the Guadalupe River has never before risen as high. By 9 o'clock this morning in this area just west of Bandera, the water had somewhat subsided. Still, it nearly reached the tops of cars one half mile off the main channel. In pre-dawn hours, local rescue teams began evacuating some residents along the river. 80-year-old Clarabelle Lovelace had crawled into a bathroom cabinet to escape what she estimates were eight feet high waters throughout her house. I could tell the water was going down and I just kept praying it would come up to my chin and I kept holding my head up against the ceiling of the closet. So the water actually was up to your chin for a number of hours? About an hour, an hour and a half, yes. Uh -huh. And I just kept praying that God had stopped the water and I let it get into my lungs. A few miles west at Camp Bandina, residents reportedly awoke at 3.30 this morning to find their campground flooded. 20 brick homes there were destroyed. And at mid-afternoon, authorities told Eyewitness News that two camp members were dead and five still were missing. It was the roar of the river at about 4.30 that awakened this group of Riverside campers. A half hour later, they climbed onto the roofs of their cabins to escape waters they say crested several feet at a time. Women holding small children were helped onto tree limbs where they stayed for more than five hours. Well, we woke up in a held him and just walked down and found a tree and a man was in a tree and I I'm so glad he's here and uh, he scooped me up into the tree and he just slept and my little boy slept through the whole thing. Massed crews plan to continue through tomorrow searching through the rubble following reports from survivors of other possible flood victims. Just about the same speed that arose, the river now is receding and soon it will be back to normal. Then clean up and repair from the damage it did can begin. Margo Spitz, Channel 5 Eyewitness. Twenty-inch rains overnight sent the Medina River surging out of its banks into Bandera, stranding many residents whose homes are along that river. Helicopters from the Fort Sam Houston 507th Mast Unit were requested early this morning to help pick those people off rooftops and out of trees. Newsman Roy Ibarra and I filmed these scenes aboard a chopper commanded by Chief Warrant Officer Ed Vasquez. Authorities in Bandera directed the chopper to points along the river where persons were reported stranded. Houses were flooded, many washed completely away, and residents in many cases had absolutely nowhere to go but to grab onto trees. At 9.45, Mrs. Lenore Champion was spotted on debris of what must have been what was left of her home. She waved us on, directing us to two children hanging on trees downstream. Their specialist five, Ron Talley, rode down on an electric hoist operated by specialist four, Arthur Barker. There they rescued Juno Driscoll. Then a more tricky maneuver was threading that cable through the tree limbs to rescue her brother, Joe. The three said that they had been there since 6 a.m. Then it was back to Mrs. Champion. All were taken to a rescue center in Bandera. At Camp Bandina, one woman was rescued from a tree we landed at that camp to fly her back into Bandera. 
two others were also found there they were less fortunate they had drowned old timers in bandera were calling this the worst flood since nineteen hundred as we flew around the area we could see the river had receded and by news time many have returned to their homes or what was left of them Paul Schaefer for big news on the scene The Southwest Foundation for Research and Education in San Antonio has the world's largest baboon colony in captivity with a population of over 2,000.